The New York Islanders get some injured players back, but the results, well, they are all too familiar as they fall 5-2 to two to the Maple Leafs. We'll break down our key takeaways from the game, talk about the updated injury report, and we will look at how bad this January has actually been. All that and more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Tuesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Gil Martin, so glad you could join us today and be part of the Locked On Islanders family. Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. We have got a lot to discuss on today's show, but first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe something you'd like us to talk about on a future episode, feel free to shoot us an email. The email address, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com, and if you leave your first name and where you're from, we are happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Isles, and you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, NYR VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings, and I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for some instant insight and analysis, and it is always great to interact with Islander fans during game time or any time. So please reach out on Twitter. You can comment on our YouTube page or uh, send an email. So lots of ways to get in touch with me and the podcast. 5-2 Islanders fall to the Maple Leafs. And for 20 minutes, things actually looked pretty good. Two goals by Anders Lee. The Islanders skated well, and well, the, in the first period, at least one goal by Anders Lee came in the final 22.2 seconds. But you know, the Islanders outskated the Leafs in the first period and played a solid game. Got that goal in the last minute, but they deserved it. Lee gets another goal later on in early in the second period responding just a minute, 11 seconds after William Nylander put Toronto on the board and evened it up, and everything looked great. But less than two minutes later, Islanders are shorthanded. John Tavares scores, and the Islanders never recover. And the big takeaway that I have from this game, four out of the five Toronto goals were scored on either partial breakaways, breakaways, or odd man rushes. There were so many defensive breakdowns in this game. And look, when you're a team that struggles to score goals, like the New York Islanders struggle to score goals, you cannot afford to get caught and give up Quality scoring chances. I mean, you know, William Nylander, John Tavares, these guys are going to score on breakaways. Austin Matthews, his goal was on a partial breakaway. These guys, you give them those kind of scoring chances, they aren't going to miss too often. And Ilya Sorokin could not bail this team out under the circumstances, and the result is a 5-2 to two loss. And again, you know, the Islanders came out in the first period skating hard, playing solid positional hockey, creating chances. The four check was working really, really well, but especially on the road, but in general, when you're playing a very talented team, a, a winning team like the Toronto Maple Leafs, you cannot afford 
to only show up for the first 20 minutes of the game. If you want to steal a point, or better yet, two points in Toronto against a team that is a genuine Stanley Cup contender, although it's the Leafs, they always find a way to screw it up in the playoffs, but the only way you're going to win the game is to play 60 minutes of solid hockey. And the Islanders didn't do that. And it, it seems to me, you know, you could sit there and say, oh, the effort isn't good. And, and, and oh, you know, why can't this team put together three good periods of hockey very often, if ever? I'll tell you why. Because top to bottom, this team isn't good enough to skate with and stay with and score with most of the good teams in the league. And you've got an outstanding goaltender in Ilya Sorokin and a very good backup in Semyon Varlamov. You've got, you know, goalies who can steal the odd game for you and keep you in games that you really have no business being in. But when you have defensive breakdowns, you can't overcome them when you can't score. And right now, this team, you know, under Barry Trotz, the Islanders tried to play this very exacting positional system that limited the quality scoring chances of opponents. And then the Islanders would try to win two to one, three to two. Uh, it isn't working right now because Lane Lambert tried to open things up, told the defenseman, hey, you can pinch a little bit more, get more involved in the rush. Well, last night against the Leafs, all that led to was breakdown after breakdown and breakaway after breakaway. And essentially, it was the ultimate recipe for losing a hockey game when you can't get back in the game by scoring enough goals. So this one was frustrating, but not unexpected. And quite simply, the Islanders just have to do better than what they've been doing because, you know, they're not getting the job done. And you know, before this game even started, there was some good news, and we'll talk about some of that in the next segment. But even when this team is healthy, even when this team is playing at its best, they don't have the horses to stay with your Torontos consistently and your Bostons and your New Jersey Devils and your Carolina Hurricanes and your New York Rangers, unfortunately, they may beat them occasionally, but over the course of 82 games or over the course of a seven game playoff series, it's asking a lot of this team to do it. And under Barry Trotz, they played that exacting defense first sound positional, everybody back checks system, and they were able to be successful with it. But one slip up and it all falls apart. And last night in Toronto, well, let's just say there was more than one slip up and everything fell apart. We have got a lot more to discuss on today's episode. We'll talk about all the roster moves the Islanders made before the game, including, you know, some injury updates, which is good news. Some of these players actually coming back and getting healthy again. Plus, uh, we'll have our Islanders birthday of the day and our unsung hero and our goat of the game. All that and a lot more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. The NFL playoffs are here, and we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. 
Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's one word, locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. If you think the Islanders will bounce back Wednesday in Ottawa, check out all the latest odds and props at FanDuel. It's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So the Islanders made a lot of moves uh, before this game even started. and. Some of this is 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 good news. Let's let's face that. Uh, the Islanders get some players back. First, they do place Cal Clutterbuck on IR. Now we already said he was out indefinitely. He's now on IR with an upper body injury, and they recalled uh, Samuel Bolduc, who made his NHL debut in the game against the Maple Leafs yesterday. So, Bolduc, uh, getting out there for the first time, former second-round pick back in 2019, played 14 minutes and 28 seconds in this game, had one shot on goal, three hits, a block shot, and was even in the plus-minus. So, that was, you know, certainly something that the Islanders – you know, it was a good thing to get that young player back up and doing his thing. The Islanders also activated off the IR. Adam Pellick, who this team has severely missed, and they activated Kyle Palmieri. So you're getting back two players who, you know, the Islanders were very much hoping would be able to help this team and look over the long run they may in order to make roster space hudson fashing placed on the ir i feel badly for fashing he really was playing well and to get hurt not good dennis chalowski sent back to bridgeport and that ended the uh you know the the transactions for the day also a scratch noah dobson Hurt late in the game on Saturday. He is officially day-to-day. So Dobson misses this game. Bolduc called up. Pellick back in the lineup. And Pellick didn't have a particularly good game. Again, a lot of rust. He was out there for a hair less than 17 minutes. But took a penalty. Had one shot, two hits, and one block. But was a minus three in this game had some turnovers, had, you know, some of those odd man rushes kind of on him. And we we certainly can't say he was anything but rusty in this game. But again, that is to be expected. Atu Ratu playing in this game, almost 10 minutes, 9 minutes, 47 seconds. The good news about Ratu is that at least he wasn't playing on a line you know, for, with the fourth line, he was out there for part of the game with Simon Holmstrom and with Zach Parise. And I like that Parise will do the dirty work, the digging, and he's experienced and he can get people, you know, the young kids can learn from playing with a guy like Zach Parise about all the little things that need to be done in order to win hockey games. Uh, And it allows Ratu and Holmstrom to have a little creativity. So to me, that was a much more logical line combination. And Lane Lambert, I think, planned that one out well, given the circumstances. Meanwhile, Kyle Palmieri, he had an assist. He had a penalty. Three shots on goal. Seven hits for Kyle Palmieri uh, in his return. 10 hits for Matt Martin in just 11 minutes and 10 seconds of action. And, oh, yeah, Scotty Mayfield, two hits, 
four blocked shots in the game. But all of these moves, look, you can't expect guys like Pellick and guys like Palmieri to all of a sudden be their old selves in their first game back. That isn't going to happen, but at least you get them back and you start that uh, that process of getting them back into game shape and getting things moving. How bad have things gotten for the Islanders offensively? Uh, these stats blow my mind. Shut out again in the third period last night against the Leafs. Ten games straight that the Islanders have failed to score in the third period. That is a recipe for losing hockey. And then in their last 10 games, the Islanders have scored three or more goals once. Once in the last 10 games. And oh yeah, in their last 12, they are now two, seven, and three for the month of January. Folks, uh, that's not going to get it done for this team. So overall, a disappointing run. But, you know, if you're scoring no goals in the third period over the last 10 games and you've only scored three goals or more once, and that was the 6-2 to two win against the Canucks in Vancouver, you're not winning too many hockey games. You're just not and I think the results, as far as the New York Islanders are concerned, kind of speak for themselves. Uh, I, I don't think it's a lack of conditioning, but it, it's just a lack of consistency and a lack of talent. Or if there is consistency, it's consistently mediocre or bad, and that is not going to get the job done. So, you know, the the... Islanders' former strength was defense, top to bottom, positional play, strong, blah, 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 et cetera. Not anymore. This team right now under Lane Lambert has sort of lost the, the thing that made them competitive and hasn't been able to replace it with enough offense. Now, getting back Palmieri, getting back Pellick should help over the long run, getting back other players who are out like Wallstrom, who we don't even think he's close to coming back, that would theoretically be helpful too. But even if everybody's healthy, and even if everybody is playing good and close to their capacity, there's just not enough firepower on this team to consistently compete with the Torontos and the Bostons and the elite teams in this league. And you know, something's got to give. We got to get to this point where either you make a trade to try to salvage this season or you start trading away your veterans and retool, if not rebuild, because this group, the way it's constituted, has done all they can do, uh, which is reaching the conference final twice. And now it's time to sort of move on. So we'll see what Lou Lamorello does, but the worst thing he can do right now is do nothing. That is not going to get it done. We have got more to get to on today's show. We'll have our unsung hero of the game and our goat of the game, plus our Islanders birthday of the day, a player who won two Stanley Cups with the Islanders and later won a Stanley Cup with the Rangers. Not too many players have done both of those things. We've got that and a whole lot more coming up today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens, our next partner as a product I literally use every day. I started taking AG1 because I'm not a great pill taker and I wanted to be able to just take one supplement to meet all my nutritional needs. Well, what is this stuff? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're getting 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adoptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all these things. And it's lifestyle-friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. 
Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day, and that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Time now for our unsung hero of the game and our goat of the game. The unsung hero of the game, it's got to be Anders Lee. I don't know how unsung he is, but let's give him credit. He had both goals for the Islanders. And look, the captain needs to step up. And I noticed on Twitter and in my, you know, the comments that I've been getting, people questioning Anders Lee, not just his ability, but his leadership in that, you know, this team is struggling and Lee doesn't seem to be stepping up. Well, part of it is when you're not playing as well, it's harder to lead. And Anders Lee getting back and scoring two goals, one of them a very Anders Lee-like rebound kind of goal, one of them on a one-timer from further away from the net. Uh, that's a good sign, and it, it is something that tells us that, yeah, Anders Lee may very well be getting closer to being back in a groove, and boy, do the Islanders need that. They need his leadership, and they need him to play well, and hopefully he will indeed get back into the groove. So Anders Lee is our unsung hero of the game. As far as the go to the game, to me, it's got to be the entire defense. Uh, too many breakdowns and too many odd man rushes. You just can't afford to play that kind of hockey when you haven't scored, you know, we have scored three or more goals one time in the entire month of January. And here we are, uh, you know, 23 days into January when you're playing this game. So to me, positional defense took a hit. Adam Pellick was the biggest offender as far as being a minus three in this game, but I'm not singling him out because this is his first game back in what, you know, almost two months. So to me, the entire defense with their breakdowns, their giveaways, their poor positional play that earns the defense as a unit. And really the team defense, because it wasn't just the defensemen. The forwards didn't do a good job of picking up players and gave them too much time and space through the neutral zone. The team defense is the GOAT of the game. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. And in case you didn't know, uh, as I said, a player who won two Stanley Cups with the Islanders and won a Stanley Cup with the Rangers as well. I'm talking about former Islanders forward Greg Gilbert, the Mississauga, Ontario native, a fourth round pick of the Isles in 1980, made his NHL debut in 81-82, scored a goal uh, in his first NHL game, had a goal and two points in four playoff games that year, and then was with the Islanders again in the 83 season and in the 83 playoffs. So those were the two cup wins. Became a regular in 83-84, but the Islanders lost in the final that year to the Oilers. Stayed with the Isles until late in the 88-89 season when he was traded to the Blackhawks and then signed with the Rangers for 93-94. Only played with the Rangers one year, but won the Stanley Cup with them in 94. Then finished his career with two seasons with the St. Louis Blues. Now... Greg Gilbert had went on to be an assistant coach and a head coach with the Calgary Flames in the early 2000s, um, was the head coach of the Worcester Ice Cats of the AHL, the Toronto Marlies and Adirondack Phantoms of the AHL, and, uh, you know, finally finished his coaching career back in 2015 2016 for his career, 837 games, 150 goals, 378 points, 576 penalty minutes, add 13 goals, 50 points, 
in 133 playoff games. I mean, Greg Gilbert really, really uh, did put things together for the postseason, kind of stepped up his game in the clutch. And he had, even though he was mostly known as a two-way checking kind of a forward, he had two hat tricks with the Islanders, one on February 25th, 1984 against the Devils in a 7-1 win, and one on February 16th, 1988 in a 9-3 thrashing of the Calgary Flames. So, you know, Greg Gilbert, not a big offensive guy, but he could certainly get the job done when needed, and he was a valuable two-way player for the New York Islanders. Now, we will be back tomorrow. We will have a full preview of Wednesday's game in Ottawa and our weekly farm report as we talk all things Bridgeport Islanders. So make sure you join us for that. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.